All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the podcast today. Got my little brother with me. Little bro. Before we get started, make sure to click the link in the bio. June pack just dropped. We got a bunch of jerseys on the side. You see the Michael Jordan jersey right there. Above right here, you see we got Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Kaka, long sleeve, white, long sleeve, and black. We got all different years. Click the link in the bio. Go shop right now. More jerseys coming very, very soon. So y'all make sure to follow. Keep update. Get the jersey plug. All right, guys. So let's get straight into the podcast. Today's topic of the day will be the NBA Finals. The Finals is officially set. We got the Celtics taking on the Dallas Mavericks. And we're going to give you all our predictions. My prediction, I got Dallas winning in six. What about you, bro? I got game seven, man. Dallas in seven. And I think this series is going to go all the way down to seven games. I wouldn't be surprised, man. It's two great matched up teams, you know, two stacked teams. Uh, Celtics are more of a superstar stack team than most people say. But the Mavericks team is very, very stacked because it fits Luka perfectly. That's a perfect team. You know, Celtics got the superstar team, but the Mavericks got that team. And I feel like that's why they're going to win. For sure, man. Yeah. I, but, you know, Dallas got to kind of play. They got to have all their starters ready. They need Derek Lively in this in this series, man. Just as much as Celtics need Porzingis. And I think this matchup is going to be one for the ages, man. I think this is going to be one of the best finals that we had in the past probably like five years. Maybe since LeBron and since Bubble. And that's my opinion. Back same. I feel like... The NBA Finals haven't really hit, for me, personally, the same sense, the bubble. Obviously, my Lakers and LeBron won it, but that matchup was good. After that, I felt like the Finals really went to shit. 2021, we had the Bucks and Suns, which is a snooze fest for me. I ain't gonna watch that shit. 2022, we had Golden State going against Boston. And they kind of watch that. I hate both teams, so I wasn't really a fan of that one. And then in 2023, we had the Denver Nuggets going against the Miami Heat. I am a Jimmy Butler fan, but that matchup was way too outmatched. You know, the Nuggets were, well, they had no, he had no chance in winning this finals. But this series right here, I feel it is very, very even. Two fun teams to watch. And, you know, either Luka or Jason Tatum will win their first ring. So, it's going to be one for the ages. All right, with that being said, the bets that we are placing for this NBA finals with Bovada, y'all make sure to sign up, link in bio, use my code, W your deposit. We are going to go with the Mavericks straight up winning the series. And I'm going to put some money on Luka Finals MVP. Because if the Mavericks win, Luka's obviously going to get the Finals MVP. Yeah, I agree with him. Luka has been showing off these playoffs, man. He's hungry for that for that Finals MVP and, of course, the Finals Championship. But we'll see. You never know. Kyrie might come to play. He might come out, show out. They might give it to him, too. Facts. He can't sleep on Kyrie. He's... The only guy on the team that's been to the finals, that got that finals experience, and that goes a long, long way. You know, playing in those bright lights hit different, and Kyrie's already used to it. He's been to like four. This is like his fourth or third. So he's ready to go, and I I can't wait to see what Luke and Kyrie do in the finals. It's going to be very, very special. For sure, going to break a couple records. We'll see how they match up against the Celtics team, another heavy guard team. You know, they got those good defenders with Derek White and Julius Randle on the. Not Julius Randle. Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday, there you go. Julius Randle's been for our people about Julius Randle, man. <laughs> but Drew Holiday, you know, he's been out there getting steals in the clutch. I think he got, like, two games back-to-back where he got, like, a steal in the last minute against the Pacers. Oh, yeah. That's and that sealed the game right there. So, hopefully he doesn't do that against Luka Doncic. Yeah, that's why, like, I feel like the Celtics match up really good against uh, – they both match up very good each other because – uh, the Ma- the Mavericks are very guard heavy, point guard shooting guy. They got Kyrie, but the Celtics could offset that with Derek White and Drew Holiday defending, great defenders. And then on the Celtics side, they're very forward heavy with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown being their main scorers. But offset again, Mavericks got Derek Jones Jr. and PJ Washington, who I think are very very good defenders. And they got extra bodies to throw at Tatum and uh, Brown, like Tim Hardaway Jr. and. Uh, bunch of other people so it's gonna be very well matched up but i'm gonna say this now i know the celtics got that defense drew holiday Derek white good offense is gonna be good defense every single night and i think that's why i give the advantage to the mavericks because they just beat the timberwolves timberwolves were the number one defense in the league and they couldn't stop them for shit you know jared mcdaniels was a fucking all nba defender and was getting cooked out there so yeah i think luca takes that uh very uh Personal, when they say, you know, all the all-time defender, great defense, he always goes out and shows out. And, you know, no one has stopped Luka, and I think no one's going to stop Luka. Like I said before, I think the Luka era has arrived. 
We are seeing the Luka era, and I think he's going to win many, many more championships. This is going to be the first one, though. This is their first year together, right, Kyrie and Luka? First full season, yeah. First they played season. last year, but that was like Kyrie got traded halfway through the season. They were hurt most of the yeah. time. They didn't even make the playoffs. But one healthy season is all it takes, and now they're in the finals. And that team is beautiful. If they're able to keep that team together, I could see them have a crazy five-year run, maybe even more because they're very young. The next five years is very bright for the Mavericks team. You know, they're also very young, maybe except Kyrie, like Lucas said in the interview. <laughs> but, you know, Kyrie's he's, he's young at heart, man. He has plenty of years left in the league. I give him a good extra maybe like six years, maybe maybe even more. He's still pretty young. He'll probably push him 40 playing still. But you never know with Kyrie Irving, man, and his mental. He seems a little bit more healthy, though, man, a little bit more happy. And I'm glad he got picked up by the Mavericks team and able to love the game of basketball like he used to. Facts. And I do feel like Kyrie will go years and years uh, playing because right now he ain't the main guy. He ain't number one option. Some nights he's not even the second option. Sometimes he slips down to third and fourth, which is really good because for the long run, keep Kyrie healthy, keep him uh, being able to move. And I feel like the Mavs will have a long, long run with both Luke and Kyrie being a duo. What do you think about the Celtics, though, man? Like, what do you think can cause them to win this finals? All right, well, I mean, the Celtics alone are stacked. I think what could help them win the finals is Porzingis being healthy. Oh, yeah, they have to. I think, it, yeah, I think Porzingis has to be healthy for this uh, for the Celtics to have a better chance. You know, they stacked all around, but I just feel like the Mavericks are the better team. But yeah, with Porzingis in there, it will be different. But even if Porzingis is healthy, Dallas Mavericks got that two-headed monster at the center spot. Livy's back. You know, he missed one game and they lost. He came back and they won. You know, little role players like that make a big difference. If you're able to have Daniel Bradford and Lively switch out, they're basically going 100% every time they're on the court because they're never going to get tired because once they get tired, they get subbed out and we yep. get a new fresh center. So I think that's been the fucking uh, recipe to success for the Mavericks. And I think... Al Horford doesn't have his hands full with those two, man. Oh. I don't see him guarding any of those two a full game's length worth. You know, Al Horford's a pretty good spot-up shooter, but his defense is a little slow on the feet, but we'll see what he can do against two young rookies. Is Gofford a rookie? No, Gofford. no, Gofford's not a rookie. Livey's a rookie. Livey's a rookie, yeah. and he's, man, he has full energy, man. <laughs> Will he go 16 for 16 or something? Yeah, he didn't miss a shot all conference finals. This is crazy. <laughs> That's what happens when you play with Luka, man. Yeah. If you a center and you're playing with Luka, every shot you get is going to be an easy dunk. It's going to be an alley-oop. It's going to be an open layup or a little putback. Yep. That's it. We saw uh, Daniel Gafford. I don't know if you know, remember, uh, during the regular season, go for like 20 for 20 in a row. He made like 25 mm -hmm. shots in a row within like three games. He almost broke the weight Chamberlain record, but he choked by like two baskets. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> he lost by two that. baskets. But, you know, they doubled in Luka. Luca knows who, who's who's open, so I feel like as if the role players are hitting, the Mavericks are hard to stop. Yeah, for sure, man. PJ Washington got to hit those corner threes early. Same thing with Derrick Jones, you know. Derrick Jones did a pretty good game, pretty good shooting in game four, but PJ and the rest of them didn't really come out. That's why they lost that game, in my opinion. And you know, so uh, the fucking uh, who they play? No, the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves. They came. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, exactly. He came out to play that first quarter. He had, like, double digits already first mm -hmm. quarter, and then Curry had, like, six points or something like that. But we kind of see those in closeout games. You know, there goes Curry's perfect record in the closeout game, you know. Mm -hmm. He got a little too cocky with that, but they close it out in game five, so that's all that matters. Facts. I feel like they could have really swept if they wanted to. I feel like they didn't come out with the fire that they were. They really – they had a 3-0 uh, advantage, and they, they, they took their gas off. They, put, they took their foot off the pedal for a little oh, bit. Yeah. Uh, Lively's injury really played a role in that too as well, but Mavericks are back healthy. If the game five Mavericks, if we see the game five Mavericks in the finals, they're gonna be hard to stop and be hard to beat because they play both sides of the ball, not just offensively. They are very good defensively. Everybody pitches in, so it's gonna be a fun finals to watch. I still got, like I said, Dallas and six. What's the status on Porzingis' return? Porzingis is not. To go yet for game one, I heard. I heard if anything, it'll be like mid mid series. But oh, they got a whole man. week. They got a whole week right now. They don't play till Thursday, so you know they might amp it up. But like I said earlier as well, it don't matter if Porzingis comes back. If he's coming back and he's not a hundred, it, it don't matter. He got to be a hundred. I don't care if he's 50, 60. That's not gonna work because I've seen Porzingis play injured. 
back in the Mavericks game uh, in the playoffs, and he'll, he'll literally just stand in the corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and he's very fragile, so he ain't trying to get hurt again. So, he got to be 100% if the Celtics uh, are going to use him. Especially going up against those young guys like Derek Lively and, uh, uh-huh. and Gaffer, man. They're going to give it to him, man. They're going to. They know he's hurt, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to back him down in that paint, and they're going to go towards the side that he's injured on, you know? But yeah, guys, with the matchup being set, Celtics, Mavericks, we got to talk about one guy that I got to be crying, bro. Grant Williams. Oh. Started the season off with the Dallas Mavericks, ended up getting traded to the Charlotte Hornets. The year before, played for the Celtics. I think he played his whole career with the Celtics up to that point. So his two former teams are officially in the NBA Finals while he's in Charlotte. <laughs> he's in Cancun right now. You know, they've been in Cancun since probably half of the fucking season. <laughs> the Charlotte team is nowhere to be found, man. It's kind of sad to see, you know, with the mellow ball there, kind of losing some star power there. But nice. hopefully Jeez. we'll see the mellow ball somewhere else. Oh. Well, how much does he have a contract or not? He has that rookie. He has that extension, I think. He's not a... Uh, big. I think he's gonna stay. I think man. he's gonna stay. I think injuries are really slowing him down right yeah. now. But they come back. I think the Ball is more of a, a businessman. You know, he doesn't really care to win like championships. Yeah. I guess not now. He's super young. But man, his his brand is going crazy. Man, his he dropped the nice shoes, his lifestyle oh, yeah. shoes, his brand, his clothing, every Puma deal. Like that dude got it made, man. And they know how to make money. Without doing much, basically. So. Yeah, I'm back in Charlie, but we'll see. Wonder what Grant Williams is saying. <laughs> I wish I could see what he's doing, man. But but so. I do think if the Mavericks win, since he played half the year as a Maverick, he does get a ring. Though. Is that how it works? Yeah, right? I, think, I think so. Because he got traded at the trade deadline, so I oh, think he. Okay. If the Mavericks want to, they could give him a ring. Will they? Does he deserve one? Fuck no. I think they got better once they got rid of him. But I think the Mavericks. Uh, are able to give him a ring if they win. So he might be a winner after all. I mean, hopefully, man. I mean, shit. I would love it. I wouldn't mind seeing him with a ring. Uh, I see. Free ring. Free ring. <laughs> same thing with, uh, now, it's kind of a different story, but same thing as PJ Washington, man. Started the season off with, with Charlotte as well. Oh, facts. And so he, he did the opposite flip of Grant Warren. From the trenches to the championships. You know, from the bottom with Charlotte all the way up to the top with Mavericks. Same thing with Gafford. Gafford started his, uh, Season with the Wizards. Oh. It's kind of worse. Yeah, fact. It's the worst. And now he's going to the finals, man, which is crazy to see. And then those two guys are one of the main reasons that they're they're in the finals oh, to yeah. begin with. So it's dope to see, man. It don't matter where you come from. You get put in the right situation, that shit could work. Yes, sir, man. We've seen PJ hit a couple clutch threes in these playoffs. Same thing with Gaffer, man. Just being a menace down in the paint, man. The alley-oops. The amount of lobs that Mavericks threw was crazy. I saw this one stat. It was like the, the Dallas Mavericks threw like 42 lobs, and the second place team was like three lobs. God damn. It was like a 40, they had four more lobs than another team, and the whole NBA too. Like the Mavericks, man. Dude, Luca just knows how to find his big man. Just throw up the ball. Yeah, exactly. That, they got some crazy team chemistry out in Dallas, and that unit hasn't even been together so, that long. But you got a playmaker in the IQ of Luca. Could really make any team work. Luka Doncic, man, European players, man, it's a new right. thing for the NBA, man. These European players are something to watch out for, man. Yeah, I saw this uh, stat on Instagram that since 2020, so in the, since like 2020, there has not been an American MVP. Since 2020. Since 2020. This whole 20, I think you gotta go back to like 2019, 18, and there was like there's I saw the graphic. I'll try to pop it up. It's like since the NBA started, like every single uh, century was none but USA flags. I think the only one that broke it was like Steve Nash. Canada went back to back, huh. and Nowitzki got one. And after that, it was just still USA flags until, so now Jokic and Bead, uh, Giannis, I shit. Luca's probably gonna get next year. Luca's robbing, robbing stuff. I mean, this top three alone this year was no American players: SGA, Canadian, Jokic, and Luca. And Luca. Some people wanted to give it to Embiid too, right? When they yeah, there. some people were saying Embiid could have got it if he, if he didn't miss a certain amount of games. But yeah, man, it's like top four MVP candidates are not American. What do you think Game about that, that that game where you miss a certain amount of games, you can't run for the MVP? 
I think it, I think it's a, it's a cool thing, but I think they put it up way yeah, too high. Yeah, me too. Sixty five is crazy, bro. And if you're trying to protect those star players, like there's guy, and it's the sixty five is not just for the MVP; it's for all NBA, all all NBA teams, and the all NBA teams. If you make an all NBA team, that means your contract extension, you get way more money. So, an example of a guy playing through the injuries to make that was Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, he made the third NBA, all NBA team, yeah. and with that, he got his big contract. But all year, in the beginning of the year, he was hot. It was on fire. Then he got hurt, but then he, a the little, little, uh, couple months, he was playing injured, and he was playing like shit. His stats went like down, but he was playing to try to make that all NBA team to get that contract. So I feel like it's not a, it's not good for the for the players, man. I think they should have lowered it a little bit down to like 55, 50. Yeah, but 65 too. is crazy. The only miss fucking 16 games is crazy. There's back to backs. There's little injuries. So much could happen. I feel like the rule was they they did a little too much. Unless your name is Mikael Bridges. Have you seen his <laughs> stat, bro? He's like 430 some games I, in a row. I think he hasn't even missed the game, right? Or he missed one game or something. Dude, he's like 440 something like around there games in a row. <laughs> I don't know how you go without getting hurt, bro. He be playing starter minutes too, so it's not That's like he on the crazy, bench. Man. That's like, one of the craziest stats. Flying from state to state, city to city, back to backs, and all matter. That boy playing. Mikael Bridges, man. He has a good career ahead of him, man. That's facts. He's I mean, still pretty young. The Brooklyn Nets, though. Let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. Another loser in the Celtic Mavericks finals. So here we go. So. Back in the day, I don't know if y'all remember when uh, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce got traded to Brooklyn. Mm, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah they got remember. traded to Brooklyn. Brooklyn gave uh, Celtics shitload of draft picks, and two of those draft picks ended up being Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And now they're in the NBA Finals. And then the Brooklyn Nets traded away more picks to get James Harden and Kyrie Irving, and they had to let them go. And now oh Kyrie Irving got traded to Dallas, and now he's in the Finals. I didn't even notice that. So yeah, I mean, the Ma- the Nets could have been the finals champions. Bro. They could have had Tatum, they could have had Brown, they could have had Kyrie still, but now they got separated and uh, both teams going to the finals. The fall off of the Nets, man. Got to be steady, man. Got to be steady. Ever since they left New Jersey, man. <laughs> that, that, man, that team just went down. Didn't Jason Kidd play in New Jersey? Yeah, Jason Kidd was New Jersey legend. <laughs> legend That's when the Nets, Nets were goaded in the Jason Kidd days. Speaking of Jason Kidd, we gotta talk about this. Jason Kidd is going to go to be the first, I think, the first person to win a championship as a head coach and as a player. Last time the Dallas Mavericks were in the NBA Finals in 2011, Jason Kidd was the starting point guard. Fast forward to 2024, he's now the official head coach for the Dallas Mavericks going to the NBA Finals. So <laughs> imagine winning this, a ring for the same team as a player and a coach. And that's the last time they won a ring was when he was back yeah. there. Like, 13 years ago was the last time they won. And now they're here back again with the same guy, man, but just as a head coach now. Which is crazy. Which is shout out to Jason Kidd, bro. One of the best coaches, bro. One of the best uh, coach players, you know what I mean? Players that became a coach. And he was a star player, too. It's not like he was a role player, you know what I mean? None of Luke Walton or something. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? None of that. Both Dar- Darvin Ham. He was a legit star. And he became a coach. And he didn't fail. He was really, really good. Uh, I remember he was the assistant coach. For the LA Lakers on that bubble run, and man, I wanted him to be the head coach. Like he was basically the head coach. Fuck yeah, who? What's his name? Fuck yeah, guy that wanted Frank Vogel. Frank Vogel was the head coach, but yeah, yeah, no, he wasn't no damn head coach. He was supposed to get fired, and Jason Kidd was supposed to take his spot. But we ended up winning the finals. They kept Vogel for one year, and within that year, we lost Jason Kidd to Dallas, and then we fired Frank Vogel, and we went Darvin Ham. So we fucked up big time. We should have. Jason Kidd should have been the Lakers head coach, but hey, it's cool to see him back in Dallas and get another ring with the Mavericks. Yeah, man, this Mavericks team, man, it's good to see them back in the winning column, you know? That's a guy that's from Texas. Nice. It's good to see our Texan teams, you know, keeping up there. Also seeing big fan of Luka and Kyrie, you know, man, you can't go wrong with those two, man. But we'll see, man. I'm super excited for these finals, man. Can't wait for them to start. Hopefully it's not blowouts after blowouts after blowouts. Yeah. Hopefully it's some pretty good games, man, some pretty clutch. Clutch buckets, you know, but we'll see, man. But we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I'm, I'm hoping as well for close games, no, no beat down. We're trying to see buzzer beaters, trying to see some Luca magic again. It's gonna be fun to fun to see, man. 
super fun, man. Hopefully, hopefully Jason Kidd, man, can get that ring, man. Just, 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 just solidify himself in, in history as a head coach. He's a perfect coach, man, for this Mavericks team, man. You know they're super guard heavy. You know the the bigs aren't too big. You know what I mean they got a lot of spot up shooters, but I think Jason Kidd was a perfect pick for that team and franchise, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, shout out Jason Kidd. I remember watching the 2011 NBA Finals. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, that was I like <laughs> one of the like first like actual series we finals we've watched. And yeah, Jason Kidd, it's the dog man. And Ma- that Dallas Mavericks of 2011 team they was came special, to- man. They were not playing, man. They first first round, you know, they four one Portland Trail Blazers. Second round, they swept the Lakers. The Kobe. defending champs. The defending champs. Four O's, clean. Sweet, man. Back to back defending chance had that. Lakers are going for the three peak. That's what. Yep, and then they go ahead and face the Thunder, you know. They 4 1 them also. And then they go ahead and meet the Miami Heat. And, you know, they won there in game six. Took it home. But Nowitzki, of course, leading the way. Leading the way. I got a hot take on that on that series, though. A lot of people say, you know, it was a uh, Heat. The big three, obviously, the first year of the big three against the Dallas Mavericks, and that it was a, a mismatch, a super team Miami Heat versus the Dallas Mavericks team. But I feel like a lot of people blow that way out of proportion, and I feel like that Miami Heat team was no bueno, man. They wasted all their dollars on the big three, and they filled them around with a bunch of trash ass players. I mean, Mike Bibby at like 40 was their starting point guard. <laughs> Joel Anthony, I don't know if y'all know about Joel Anthony. He was a starting center. I mean, they didn't have no pieces, no money. That's why after they lost that, they went and revamped in 2012 and got Mike Miller, Shane Battier, Ray Allen came through, Charlotte Lewis. They got all, the, all of them in one summer? Yeah, they got all of them in one summer. Yeah. They didn't have all that. They had a bunch of trash at first in 2011. So, but shot the Mavs, their run. One of the best runs, you know, from the first round, second, third of the finals is one of the best. And I actually remember, bro, uh, the last like 20 games of the se- of the season, I was in like seventh grade. I would check on NBA.com every day to see the standings moving because I was like, our oh, playoffs are coming and see what's happening. I remember the Mavericks were getting hot, bro. I remember they were like at the 60 or something. And they was passing everyone up. They ended up, I think, two or three, somewhere up there. But I remember I was like, man, the Mavericks cooking right now. I think they got a chance to win it all. <laughs> they ended up winning it all, so they caught fire at the right time. And I feel like this Dallas Mavericks team reminds me a lot like them because they caught fire late in the in, in the season this year. You know, they were in the play-in just a couple months before the playoffs started. They was able to sneak out of there, grab that fifth seed, take down the Clippers, and get out of that play-in tournament. Like I said, they got they got hot quick and had a good time. Talking about championship runs, man. This championship run for the Mavericks this year was insane, man. First round nice. against the Clippers, dude. But Kawhi, PG-13, bro, and fucking James Harden, like... like Luka finally got his get back after losing the Clippers like two times. Oh, my God. Play. You know, they, had, they, they were jumping that boy out there. Luka had no help. Luka split the block, got the last laugh, and now he's in the final. And the next round facing the number one seed, Oklahoma City Thunder. But the second youngest or the first youngest team? Second youngest, right? Second or first? I think they were second the youngest. youngest. They were from, I think second, it was second. Yeah, second. The first were like a, yeah, the or, shitty yeah, the Pistons or something. Go shit, ahead yeah. and beat them out the water. You know, they were losing, losing the competition, man, at that point. Yes. And then, of course, we all saw 4-1 against Minnesota, which people had no idea that I was going to. I didn't see that coming, man. I thought that was going to 7. I thought Minnesota was going to start a hot like they did against Denver, maybe take a 2-0 lead. But, man, that Mavericks team did not play, man. No, no. But I do, about the Timberwolves, you know, I saw that matchup and I was like, oh, I like that. I like that. You know, I know the Timberwolves surprised a lot of people with defeating the champs, Denver Nuggets, who we thought were unbeatable, to be honest. I didn't think <laughs> anyone was going to beat them. But, you know, matchups make uh, make fights. And the Timberwolves stacked up perfectly against the Nuggets. Rudy Gobert, Cat, Naz Reed, being able to throw them at Jokic, match up with Jokic, it was easy. You know, no one, no one really could match up with Anthony Edwards from the Nuggets side, so they had an advantage. Well, flipping down to Dallas, now those bigs in Minnesota, that shit don't matter no more. You, you, you don't got a double Gafford in Lively, you don't. You got to guard Luka now. You got to mm-hmm. guard Kyrie now, and they didn't have 
the debt to do that like they did when they had to guard the bigs. So I feel like the matchups uh, make, the, make the game, and I feel like the final Celtics and Mavs match up really good. I still give the Mavs that. And you can ask yeah. Anthony Edwards how tiring it is to guard <laughs> the Kyrie Irving, man. He saw him, he was completely gassed out there, man. He couldn't even walk down the court, man. That was embarrassing to see, especially after all the shit he was talking about, how he wants to guard Kyrie, he wants to do all this. Man, Anthony Edwards exposed himself that series, and I don't want to sound like a hater or nothing, but it's good to see that, man, because the media was starting to compare this to Michael Jordan, which is fucking crazy as I'm wearing a jersey. Michael Jordan, bro, that's crazy, man. Like, calm down, man. What do you think about that? That was insane, bro. I mean, I understand the recency bias. You know, it happens every year. Someone get high in the playoffs, we we'll talk about them. But end of the day, they always end up choking and folding, showing the true colors. And yeah, I think the Ant Man hype was 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 going crazy. It was too crazy, man. Michael Jordan's son, all face of the league. Like, nah, bro. Yeah, yeah, I gotta chill. I understand they swept Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns, but they swept the Phoenix Suns. Like that team was garbage. They, they don't even got a point guard. They got no debt. They traded their debt for star power. Kind of reminds me of the 2011 uh, Miami Heat. Honestly, that's like. But the Heat actually made it to the finals, but that's like the perfect exact team that the Heat were. Star heavy, no uh, no role players. And then they got the Nuggets upset, but yeah, I think Edwards, I mean, he's still young, so I wouldn't. Yeah, he's still young. He's only like 22, Yeah, man. 22, which is crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, crazy bro. But I, I do say uh, Edwards, you know, I think his ceiling is a Devin Booker. You know what I mean? Superstar, but not, not a... Not one that's gonna get you that ring, take you over the top. You know what I mean? I feel like if he becomes a, a second option to a guy like that, to a number one option, I feel like that team will be unstoppable. But Anthony Edwards as a first option for now, for me, I don't think he'll cut it. For me, I think Edwards, what he needs to do is shoot the ball, man. Stop, stop faking it. Stop thinking about it, man. Just shoot it. Like he had a lot of chances. I know you were going six for twenty-four. 10 for 23 and all that, but man, just still, man, you're an NBA player, man. Shoot the ball, bro. Exactly. Like, you, you saw it really in that game three against the Mavericks where he came off that 6 for 24 field goal percentage, and then he was, like, he had open shots, and he was scared, man. He usually bangs those. Like, in the Denver series, he was pulling up on everyone. Aaron Gordon, Jamal Murray, right in their face. But against the Mavericks, he, all he did was pump fake and then pass it. But we'll see what, they, what he comes with next year, man. I'm really excited to see how he grows as a player, though. I'm here for it. What do you think the Timberwolves should do? I've seen uh, Kevin Garnett talk about it. You trade Rudy, no. you trade Cat, no. you keep the team together. Yes. You keep it, bro. Why would you trade a team that made it to the Western Conference exactly. Finals? It makes no sense. I hate when teams do that. One thing I do hate the most, though, is when a team, or well, not a team, but a coach, takes a shitty team like the Cleveland Cavaliers to the Eastern, no, to the second round, second sorry, round. second round, and then fire him. They fired the head coach for the Cuban Cavaliers, man. I know, that's crazy. The coaching firing is crazy, bro. Like, I understand a coach like Darvin Ham or a guy ain't make the playoffs. Like, a guy with history. Yeah. But, and at that, he gets fired when his team makes it to the second round injured, bro. They don't even have Donovan Mitchell I'm in the saying, Celtics bro. series. They didn't have Jared Allen in the first round. That's crazy. I mean, it's, just, it's, un- it's as unfair as it gets. An NBA coach is the hardest job in the league because... You won fucking ten bad games in my fire your ass. So. That's, that's bad. And who knows who's who's doing that? It might be the players. I heard a lot of conspiracy theorists saying, saying that Donovan Mitchell was behind that, but you never know with the media nowadays. But that's just just insane to see how much how much new coaches there are. Like you got to give a coach at least three seasons, bro. Like yeah, you're not gonna build shit with one season. Like it's impossible, bro. Like any sport, you can't do it. You need more than three. You got to build chemistry with the players. You got to build. Bonds and relationships with everybody. See, hey, man, we'll see what's up with the with, with the Cleveland Cavaliers, man. I'm pretty, I was pretty impressed with that, man. Honestly, I'm glad they took that one game. At least they won that one game yeah. against Cleveland. Yeah. I'm against uh, Boston, but man, I had seen the odds for that game. It was like Cleveland were like plus six twenty five, and I was I knew they were gonna win, dude. I, I should have placed it, but I just had a strong feeling they were gonna win that game. And fair enough, they blew them out the water. They, I think they won by like thirty or something. Yeah, it was it was a game they blew. They won them by out. like thirty, but then they lost like thirty that game. <laughs> what do you do if you're Mitchell? Do you stay in Cleveland or do you go? Because I think he's a free agent this summer. That is a very good question, man. Mitchell, a lot of people saying he wants to leave. At this point in Mitchell's career, man, he needs to find a home. And 
I feel like, in my honest opinion, he probably should have never left Minnesota, uh, Jazz. But you know how things go a certain way, you know. But if I'm Donovan Mitchell, I'll keep my options open. But that Cleveland team is pretty good, man. Like, give him a couple more years. Because the East is, man, who's in the East? Celtics? Like, come on, bro. Like, like the Cleveland can beat some of those East teams, bro. They're healthy with Jared Allen. And they got uh, Mobley mm-hmm. with Donovan Mitchell and Garland. Maybe, they, maybe they're just missing the shooter. A little shooter, but I think that that team should stay together. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I agree. I feel like if anything has to change, it's maybe Trey Garland. He had a bad year this year, but also Garland was playing injured most of the year yeah. as well. So you know, it, just, still it young, probably man. just takes. They're young. They're a young team. You know what I mean? That's four four great players right there. You know, those are four centerpieces. And you know, I saw Evan Mobley drop like thirty two and ten in mm-hmm. the game, the last game of the series. So they got they got some ballers out there. I think they should keep them together, but we'll see, man. You know, with a coach being fired, a lot of players don't don't like to stick through the stay in the fire. Yeah, to hop out of there and go to somewhere better. I really New hope York. they do stay, though, man. I really yeah. hope they stay. But like what you just said, Mitchell in New York would be kind of crazy. Yeah, Mitchell with the Knicks team would be super crazy. But I don't know if that would really fit that well. But we'll see what Mitchell does, man. This off season, man. Hopefully he can. Recover from his injuries, you know, and hopefully he can be a healthy player next season. Bring out, bring out the old Mitchell that we know. Right, but spider. we'll see. But as what he told me before, Minnesota, I think they need to stay together, man. If Minnesota breaks up this summer, it's over for that franchise for mm-hmm. a good twenty more years, just like how they were with Kevin Garnett. Because <laughs> that team is a problem, man. And I don't want them. Hopefully, they don't take this this loss too seriously or too to heart. You know, just keep working, man. Y'all did good, man. Just y'all could have knocked down the shots. You know, Cat was slow with his threes. I don't know why he's shooting threes against the Mavericks. Like, shooting threes against the Nuggets makes more sense, you know? Exactly, yeah. But shooting threes against the Denver, against, uh, Mavericks, bro, like, come on, man. Drive on their ass, man. Drive on Gafford, man. Like, but, man, they, they made a bad choice there. Edwards was, of course, out of his rhythm, you know? But we'll see what Minnesota does this offseason, man. I hope they stay together, though, man, because that's a good team, man, for the next couple of years. They can be a problem. Right. I mean, they got the superstar in Edwards. They had the sixth man of the year, Nazri, and the deploy. Rudy Gobert, you can't just have two award-winning players on a team in regular. Crazy, man. Also, we got to stop the Rudy Gobert hate, man. Too many people <laughs> are saying, trade Gobert, Gobert <laughs> trash, fake depoy, whatever, whatever. No, no. You keep Rudy. He's the reason y'all kind of got this far. Defense wins championships. You got the best defender in the league and you want to trade him. I understand he might have got a little exposed this series. But like I said earlier, the matchups make the game. And I felt like... Rudy Gobert didn't match well against the Mavericks, bro. I mean, who do you want on the guard? Luca? You, you saw what happened. He got that buzzer. That shit gonna happen to any center, bro. Not just Rudy. Yeah. Throw any center in there, that shit gonna happen, bro. For sure. You know? Rudy is a post defender. He, he's gonna play defense if they're trying to drive in. And the Mavericks are smart. They weren't gonna drive in, bro. They were shooting their threes, mm-hmm. getting good mid ranges. And if they were getting shots in the paint, they were open alley oops because of the double team, so. Feel like you gotta keep Rudy. Y'all gotta stop hating on him. He point was very well deserved, and I think he's still the best defender in the league. Rudy Gobert is a very—he's a good player, man. And one thing where I think he shies out is shooting, man. Mm-hmm. He cannot be averaging nine points, man. Like, come on, bro. He's like, seven feet, bro. Dunk that shit. Nine <laughs> points is crazy, bro. He, him and Cat. Cat did pretty bad this playoffs, but not not this playoffs, but but more about Gobert, man. But Gobert on D, man, he's he's good, man. I, I don't see why people hate on him, you know. Of course, one one game winner, I wasn't going to say stuff, you know, one bad series, mm-hmm. I wasn't going to turn on you, but I think Gobert should stay focused, you know, come back next year, come back next year hungry, man. I don't think, I don't think he deserved the boy though, if I'm being honest. Yeah. But, we'll see, man. I don't see, I don't even watch defensive, man. I don't care about it. <laughs> so. They always going to give it to whoever's blocking shots. And... I would have given it to Wimby, but he's a rookie, so. Can't give it to Wimby. Yeah, you can't Wimby, give it to Wimby. Wimby, man. Phew, my God. Wimby, we have, we have a superstar on our hands, man, over here in San Antonio. San Antonio. I'm wow. glad to see it, man. Especially for just the kind of guy Wimby is, man. Super young. Super, like, motivated, positive, you know. I love the player, man. I love watching him. I hopefully we can go watch games this year, go watch live, go witness the Wimby hype. But his career is going to be something special, man. Hopefully he can stay healthy. Maybe get a little bit more muscle on him. You know, mm-hmm. he, look, he looks like Giannis when he was back in the ring. Yeah. He was a little skinny guy, but if Wimby gets some muscles on him, man, 
and maybe a little bit better post game, it's over, man. This dude, you saw what he did against Gobert, man. This fucking man looked like a little kid. Right. Putting the ball up over him, pull up threes. Like, Wimby is very special talent that the NBA has acquired. And the Spurs got to fucking realize they got to put a winning team around them ASAP, man. I don't care if he's young. He, yeah, that kid, like you said, is special, man. You got to. You put him in the playoffs, I feel like he'll cook. I feel like he'll do even better in the playoffs. So they got to get there ASAP. They in the West, though, one of the, the hardest conference. And yeah. it's going to be hard to sneak in uh, one of those eight spots, man. But they got to make some moves, hopefully this summer. Hopefully this summer, man. Honestly, they got to retire Popovich, man. <laughs> that man got to go enjoy his life, man. Go do something, man. Because the way he's playing his, his star rookie, Wimby, is not the way he should be playing Wimby. Don't manage. I don't think you should be minute restricting him. I know it's his first season, but the first season is the most important. Mm-hmm. I'd say you give him the most minutes. Let him be out there, you know, get his feet wet, you know. But Popovich is a great coach, as we saw. But this was decades ago, man. Mm-hmm. We've seen this. We saw this decades ago, and I think, I think the Spurs will do better with a newer coach, you know, try to somebody that fits Wimby a little bit better. But we'll see what the Spurs have. You know, the Spurs have been a pretty bad team lately, and it kind of sucks to see. But I remember going, to, I remember going and watching them like, live. We went to go watch them against the Heat with Chris Rogers that buzzer beater on us. Chris Rogers with buzzer beater. We went to go see uh, Thunder right when KD was there. Yeah, KD. We saw KD and the Thunder against uh, Tim Duncan, Ginobili, and Farfir. We saw some pretty good matchups back in the day, man. We saw New Jersey, Jason Kidd. We uh, did see Jason Kidd. Denver, Carmelo Anthony. And fun fact, the only reason we've seen so many games is because the Little League that we played in, at the end of the, every year, you got to go play on the Spurs court, bro. We got to play a game in the Spurs court early morning, like 8 a.m. You go to Spurs, you're playing on the actual court and shooting on the actual hoop that NBA players played on. Yep. It's fucking dope, bro. Like, to think about it now... That shit was crazy, bro. Like it's insane. Insane. And then they give you tickets to watch that game at night. So then you pull up so back that same but night. Yeah. It's worth it. Hey, but you're gonna play on the court in the morning though. So I remember splashing the three on that court, man. That memories you won't ever forget, man. man hey, exactly. That shit was crazy, man. That stadium. I haven't been there in a minute, but this the AT T is it called AT Center? It's called Frost Bank now, bro. Frost Bank. As we know, AT and T Stadium. Real ones know. Real ones know, man, what I'm talking about. But that stadium, man, is childhood memory right there, man. I, I love that stadium. Going there to the games, watching the games, watching the big three, man, Ginobili, Parker, and Tim Duncan, bro. Like now that all that's over, like saying that is crazy. It's crazy, yeah. yeah. Like, say that we witnessed that. It was just... Probably one of the best big threes to ever do it, besides the Heat. But Ooh. what do you think? Who who would win that matchup? We've seen it. We've seen it. I mean, We've seen it. Seen it. I mean, they went one and one. But I, I, um, but I it's hard to say. They won five, bro. Or like four, three together. They won. I feel like the only three. reason why the Spurs had won that one series was because of Kawhi. Yeah. Maybe were. Kawhi didn't do too much defense on LeBron, but like just having him is was a big requirement, you know? If it was just the big three, Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Janabi, with no Kawhi, I think he all day. Yeah, I think he would have took it all day. Also, D Wade was struggling with knees and migraines. You know, if y'all didn't know, he was getting subbed out because of the migraines. He had to go lay down, cover his face for like five minutes. Mid game. Mid game, yeah. What? He's going through his migraines and knee injuries. Yeah, look, bro, I have a uh, heat stroke at the San Antonio too. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> well, no AC, bro. No I AC. forgot about that. AT and T Center. They had no AC <laughs> in June too, so this is summertime. So if y'all, y'all from Texas, y'all know it's hot as oh, fuck. Uh, hundreds so, in the hundreds. In the hundreds, steaming. So imagine a stadium full of people with no AC. It's fucking crazy, bro. Imagine how hot that shit was in there. Oh my god, I can't imagine, dude. That sucks, man. <laughs> Bro, I got the fucking crap. Right? No, they they, they like oh, they picked him up. Yeah, <laughs> he got he got cramps. Bro, I remember that. <laughs> Everyone was crazy. making fun of him and shit. Yeah, I remember we, we watched games and this is like more towards the end of the big three when Janali and them were on the bench, and when Janali would check in, man, man, that stadium would erupt, man. Everybody uh, was yeah. like clapping, screaming, like it was crazy to see the amount of love that Janali and Tony Parker got. 
And then, yeah, yeah. That whole Spurs era, big three era, that Spurs team and fans are like one big family. Like, you just, like, it was just one. It was embarrassing to say you're a Spurs fan. You know yeah. what I mean? Nowadays, like, I guess what I was, when, before Wimby was there, you know, I was like, man, Spurs, like, who's even there, man? Like, did you even watch them? The Spurs fans didn't watch the Spurs the last, like, two, three years. You go from winning so much to the fucking being really, really bad. But now they got Wimby, though, so. That was a crazy, man. Crazy. Those people beat the NBA back in early no. 2010s, you know, like, man. Those the best era is the early 2010s, hands down, man. Hands down, the best. The best. I don't care what anyone says, man. The early 2000s were dope, don't get me wrong, but the talent in the 2010s was just different, man. The 10s is where the NBA hit that peak of of talent and uh media. Yeah, like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, social the hype, media, the social yeah. media, the the games were better. New generation. Behind new generation. That's when the new gen hit, and it hit fucking hard. And we also, the 2010s was also the beginning of the super teams. The players moving, you know? Yeah. Players ain't got to stay on the same team for their whole career. They want to go team up with him, they want to go team up. So when the players took... uh part in uh, making their own contracts, which is, I think, the best thing to happen in the NBA. Because, honestly, if the NBA was, you just stay on the same team, like back in the day, for your whole career, I think shit would be boring. You'll it have the same very winners. Boring. Very boring. Honestly, I would it, it would be a repeat after repeat after repeat. Just like we saw in the Jordan era, man. You saw the Bulls, they kept winning because they got they had the same team, they played the same goddamn and team every time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, exactly. Come on, man. Of course you're going to win every time. But nowadays you got players teaming up, making super teams, all these trades, free agencies. I mean, I, I love seeing that. I feel like a lot of people hate on it, but I feel like it makes the game more interesting. It makes like breaking news any second. You can look at your phone and something could happen. And this is an every sport, man. NFL has took a turn. Nice. NFL is every fucking year. There's a whole team that looks completely different. Teams are trading people mid-season. Like, uh, I don't see. I'm a fan of it. Like he said, you know, I don't know if y'all saw that, but the Bills <laughs> signed a wrestler, a gold medalist, which is crazy. <laughs> hey, that bro, bro, living life though. I heard. I heard he tried to try out for the WWE. Yeah, I heard he got. He was signed to the WWE. I don't know if he ever like. I just wrestled? Saw I didn't really look yeah, it. I think he, he got signed to WWE like a year or two ago. Um, and I don't know if he ever did a wrestling match or the contract fell through or he didn't want to do it no more. But he ended up going football. From wrestling to football, man, I don't know how he's going to adjust to that, man. I don't think that's a good combination, man. I feel like he ain't going to be able to do it, bro. That's like, it's not, I understand he's people. strong, but. You're not picking and slamming him, bro. You got to push him. Like, and there's if techniques. You, if you grab, it's a fucking flag. Yeah. So, like, we'll see how he adjusts, but. I just saw that a couple of, like, two days ago, maybe. That, that was something funny to see on this channel. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I was like, what? Like, what? We're just wrapping <laughs> back to the NBA. You know, we got the finals coming up. When's that, next week? Yeah, Thursday, June 6th. June Game 6th, one. man. Game 1 of the NBA Finals, man. 2024. It's crazy to say that the finals are already here. I remember just opening seat, opening game, opening game. Remember that? Yeah, the game for season. Everything, man. All this, everything just time just flies by, man. But well, hopefully we're here to stay. Hopefully we see a good series, man, against the Celtics versus the Mavericks. And all I gotta say is, as I said, 